Hello and welcome back to the finishing line. Apologies for being late. I'm, uh, you Actually, know, one Tom's fault. One Tom's fault. It was everyone's fault. It wasn't me. It's probably my fault. I was rambling in the other video. What's the delay? The first one, the first comments. Massive rant. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of a rant. <laughs> Still laughing at the ten acting. Sure. Oh, I'm sure. Sure. how can I you go close to the? No, camera. no, no. If anyone has Instagram or maybe it's on Twitter too. Paddy, Paddy, no, me. no, I'll do it then. Paddy Powers Instagram is brilliant. There's a picture of Ten Hag with hair, and it just says, "At least it was worth the trip." At least, anyway, oh, it's fantastic. Uh, we are here to talk about the weekend's racing, some great racing at Newbury, Newcastle, and an entire four minutes late. Outrageous. And uh, a great card at Fairy House on Sunday. So we'll touch on some of the races, the main races from those cards. Oh, wait I, wa I want answers in the comments below. Should or should not? Should or should not? Should Dave go to Turkey and get this done and look like everything Hank? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dave Believe it. That's incredible. In the comment if I Dave love should that, go get that done. If. If Imagine you with locks like that. If we get a thousand likes, oh, I'll, I'll go get it done. Thousand likes. That's easy. Tom, get your fucking account, bank account ready, boy. Oh, yeah, let's get on these, these Filipinis account. Filipinis? Tom, get the money ready, quick. Hang on. Who said I was paying for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have the money there. Did you say he was paying for yeah. Oh, you just got scammed, son. No scammers. A thousand likes is going to be piss easy to get. Dino David a mullet would be deadly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to end this year with hair and a Vassal Vega tattoo. You realize what you just done? I said like a Vassal Vega tattoo as well. When? Uh, I think last year I said, but if no, that was Fernie Hollow. No, was it? Yeah, it was Fernie Hollow, Cheltenham. You're not a real fan if you don't have a tattoo, though. Eh? We got you got drunk and you said if Fernie had one, it should be Chase. You'd get a Fernie Hollow tattoo. If a hassle off. I'm liking this, lads. Get them fucking likes going. I'm telling you. I look good. Yeah. I'm feeling myself now, I tell you. You feel yourself uh, every night. That's a different way. I think this is what they call a midlife crisis, guys. Tom, Tom you just, horses, you you just need, while you're, while you're sitting there, you need to figure out how you're going to tell Siobhan you gave me five grand to get hair. <laughs> I hear <laughs> transplanted. <laughs> Horse main. <laughs> oh, stop. Uh, as ever, thank you to our sponsors, Christian Events. You can see him in the box below. 10% off the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I didn't see it. Oh, uh, the gold and black membership. The finishing line pin. You gotta read that out, You gotta read that out. We've all just. I'll put, uh, I'll put up. Wait up. Wait up. There we go. Dave would look like the young lad that was on the late late tie show. If anyone was up for late late tie show last week, was it? Oh, I'll show Did you. Have a oh, I'll show you. Did they have a mullet? Yeah, oh, he had the best yeah. mullet ever. Um, while Andrew's getting that up, as ever, please drop in, have a look at our website and Glishan events website uh all our social media uh we, andrew's been in the background working away on the fan base plenty of articles going up there they're adding in some selections on our anti-post video as well so check that out uh tom is the man cool dude now tom you're the man i'll take that Thank you feel you. very cool about yourself right now uh as ever please like and subscribe <laughs> subscribe to the channel and like the video a thousand likes might get some hair just need to ask him on first the Himmler Go Princess <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god show that one Darn. oh I know we're probably not allowed no we can't yeah it's or, not I have hardly have seen it though it's the late late toy show mullet mullet job business at the front party at the back <laughs> <laughs> oh if only Borat was here I can't believe it. Uh, uh, what, what a day. Yeah. Hennessy's, yeah. On, Hennessy's on Saturday. I'm getting here. You'll have Mullet on Sunday. I had a person here this morning, and he's actually going to Turkey to get new teeth. 
they should ask him to inquire about the hair while he's over there. Yeah. I'll text you. He's, got, he's flying out Sunday. Would you believe that? You should go with him. Flying out Sunday. I swear to God, this happens. He's the best thing ever. Oh, I'll tell hilarious. him. He, the fella that does the tea probably does the hair as well. Get two for one. Christmas. Black <laughs> Friday <laughs> special. <laughs> Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> two for one deal. He fly out Sunday. I'll fly out the following week. If this happens, I'm going with you, and I'm recording all of this. Oh, stop! I, I can see us having a, a GoFundMe set up for this by the end of the week. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> oh, yeah, stop! Uh, anyway, let's move on to the racing. Uh, a lot of good racing. Andrew's picked out a lot of the graded racing, which is fantastic. Again, in another week weekend where there's loads of horses that we're looking forward to coming out. And the first race we're going to touch on is on Saturday, the 150 at Newbury. The John Frankham Novices Chase, Grade 2. Uh, it's over 2 miles, 4 furlongs, 3 furlongs, 187 yards, but 4 furlongs. Uh, and Herpes Allen is the favourite, 11-8. to eight. Hate that cunt. Nickelback, 4-1. to one. Marble Sands, 7-1. to one. Colonel Mustard... That poor horse is just uh, does not know how to win. Love's coming second. Eight to one. Uh, no ordinary Joe. Eight to one. And tighten our belts. Twelve to one. And you know what? That's I'll not, something I need to do lately. I start this off, and there's a horse I really like in this. Said it to Andrew last time he won. Sing it. Said no. Oh, Nickelback. So far, oh, no, <laughs> no, that's very bad. That's a, okay, I also need singing lessons, apparently. <laughs> Just two seconds. Oh, that was brilliant. Do it again. No, Do it again. Please. I was trying to think of a song. That was that Nick, brilliant. That Do it again. Nickelback. What was I supposed to sing? Do you sing a right? No, it's too slow. The viewers won't like that one. That's a very sad one. What other songs did I have? The Rockstar one. Good video. Oh, yeah. Kid Rock's in that video. Oh, you, you, we can recreate that when you get the mullet. <laughs> anyway, it is Sarah Humphreys, lunatic chaser, goes from the front, pedal to the metal, nickelback. Um, he's transformed since he went chasing. I said to Andrew when he won the last day, I said, they got to put that horse in a greater race now. He's going to batter everything else and he'll just keep going up the handicap. Um, so why not throw him in here four to one? He go out in front. You won't see anything else. If they hold him up, I will actually throw the remote at the television, and that's the god's honest truth. Uh, so Nickelback for me, G S I. What? Uh, yeah, I agree. Nickelback for me as well. Uh, last two rounds uh, resulted in a twenty-four length win and a nineteen length win. He is going to expose any jumper frailty and any fitness frailty from Her Herpes Allen as first run of the season. He's going to go off like the clappers. It'll be catch me if you can, and I don't think they will be able to catch him. Um, look, he's fitness on the side. He jumps really well. He, he He's like a pound shop version of Gaelic Warrior, the way he races. Off he goes on his travels, and he doesn't come back. Uh, I think he has a very, very good chance here. Uh, Hermes Allen... Look, a lot of Paul Nichols are needing to run. Um, on a, I, I won't be overly keen on going on at 11 to 8 with him here. Um, Marvellous Sands, look, won, won last time out, but I think he's a bit below the standard of what Nickelback has set so far. Colonel Mustard, love it, just coming second. He was second to found a 50 the last time, which was half a chase and half a flat race. And then, look, you've no ordinary Jones point in your belt. I think 4 to 1's a fair enough price, and I think he'll be one of my main bets of the weekend. Sean? Yeah, I'm actually going with the selection that I thought you were going to put up. Um, and it's going to be Marble Sands for me in here. Do you want to just put yourself on mute? I think the echo is back. There we go. Um, Marble Sands. Um, he showed decent form last season when he was transferred yards to Fergal O'Brien. And um, he won two races before he went to Newbury and took on Hermes Allen, the cello. We're in a funny race on background. I just don't think we've seen the real him. He came back to hunting in them where he won a listed race and he went on to run in the Ballymore where he was fifth, just ahead of Hermes Allen. He changed hands back to his old trainer and turned out novice chasing this season in a handicap forced off at her where he went off 11 to 1. I'd say it was definitely because they felt as though he probably wasn't ready. 
because um, it wasn't on form because he was well entitled to be short in an 11 to 1 shot. Chase and Fire was in the race and he was back in fifth, but his jumping is what struck me. He looked a natural over a fence and um, he was kicked into one or two and he wasn't hesitant. He went straight for them. I think his jumping will stand up around here and form we've seen that he's in and around Hermes Allen level, who's four to six. Marble Sands is around seven to one shot now. I think the difference is way too big and um, I think he should be a four to one shot at least. So it's going to be Marble Sands in here for me. Yeah. Tom, um, I can see I can see cases for the two of those. Um, my thing with Nickelback was, uh, for all he's been impressive, he's won a novice handicap and then a handicap at Warwick and Stratford. Like he's going to have to step up again on that for me. Um, for all he's been, and I see why you two love him because he's definitely passed the eye test. Um, my uh, yeah, look, my, my thing would be Hermes Allen should be better than these. Um, he's always been thought of as a chaser, and I think if if you looked at this and offered this as his chasing debut, um, even six months ago, I think you'd be just saying, yeah, he'll he'll beat all of those handy. Um, he's an eleven to eight shot. I I couldn't back him at eleven to eight. It's a it, it is a no bet race for me. I can also see Marvel Sands case, Sean. Um, I think he ran very well at Cheltenham and Aintree at, at very big odds. He jumped well on his chase and debut, and I, I think the step up and trip would help him as well. Um, for me, I just I, I couldn't take on Hermes Allen, uh, but I couldn't back him in eleven to eight either. So I'll uh, I'll sit it out and watch. Uh, is the echo here now? Hello. It's only what we talk, I think. Yeah, it's no, no, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, Sean, your voice is in bits, lad. Sean has COVID. Sean, do you have COVID? Oh, I definitely don't have COVID. Too much partying. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're on to the long distance hurdle. Grade two, three miles. And unfortunately, the long distance hurdlers, the division is very poor. And this is just a poor race. This is like um, a veteran's hurdle. It's horrible. Marie's Rock is even money favourite. Paisley Park, he's 111. It's <laughs> <laughs> three to one. <laughs> Dash the Drasher is 110. It's 4 to 1. Flight Dex, 20 to 1. Hugo's new horse is 33 to 1. Uh, and Man's Glory is 66 to 1. I have no strong selection in this. If I had to choose one, pull it the uh, gun to the head, it would be Dash the Drasher uh, after having his first run of the season. But it's uninspiring to say the least. Andrew, can you do any better? Uh, not really. Um, look, this is a whole uh, <coughs> Marie's Rock realistically needs to be beaten. These if Jan any chance of stairs. Ter- Percy, I don't think she she will stay truly three miles at Cheltenham. She got beat by Sir the Birdies at Aintree. Look, she traveled really well throughout the race. Um, it, and look, the small field will sue, or she and she probably will win to be honest. Um, she should be faster than these. Like Dash and Drasher, he ran in so many snatches. Last week, or not last week, the last time he ran was ridiculous. Paisley Park, look, he'd probably be ref to the gills for this, but what are the legs <laughs> like these days? God only knows. She should win, realistically, but I think this will be her her winning over three miles, done and dusted if she wins this. Good record, fresh last season. She beat Dash and Dash over two miles, four or five at Cheltenham last season. They go steady pace, she should win. Uh, Tom? Um, I oh, look for me. This is again really, really, really tricky. Uh, Marie's Rock. She can throw a bad run in there, can't she? And she's a mixed enough record uh, first time out. So that was enough for me to want to take her on, uh, especially at the price she is. But then you get into it. You got Paisley Park. He's had four runs in this race. He's been first, second, third, second. Um, a stabler in flying form. Um, Tom Bellamy gets up on him because Aiden's still out injured, but. He has ridden him before, so he knows him a bit. Um, you're then looking at Dasher Drasher. He hasn't won a race since he beat Void a Rev last season. Um, his stable are in flying form as well. Um, and then you're into a horse like Flight Deck, who ran an absolute blinder at Cheltenham last time, but is it too good to be true? Uh, and he's got he's got a little bit to find with these. So again, sorry to be boring, guys, but I couldn't be I couldn't be back in any of these at these prices. Um, so yeah, I'll be watching this one on on Friday as well. Uh, Sean. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm a bit windy myself, but I can fully understand that some lads are doing their brains on Marie's Rock because um, listen, the only thing you're probably worried about 
is look, I know she was outstayed by Sora de Borle's um at Aintree, but she, like she was still miles clear of Foran Porta. Um so it's not that she, I don't think she stays the strip the strongest, but yeah, again, I can't see this race like being ran on a helter scale like Gallop. Dashiell Drasher will probably get his own way out front, but he was wicked disappointing the last day. And Paisley Park, like he's eleven, you'd be brave putting your money on him um, and here to see what one's gonna turn out. Was it this race a couple of years ago? He whipped around at the start and gave away a couple of lengths and came oh, back. Uh, that was that was that was but um yeah, uh, no bet for me, but Maria's Rock, I think, is gonna take the beat. Okay, uh, we are on to the 250 at Newbury. The main race is Saturday, formerly the Hennessy, the Coral Gold Cup handicap chase. Three miles, two furlongs. Maller Mission is favoured here, seven to one. John McConnell hasn't had a winner in a long time, though. Since 1996. Uh, complete unknown, 15 to two. Mombeg Genius, eight to one. Stumptown, 10 to one. Midnight River, 11 to one. Stolen Silver, 14s. Hoy Senior 18s, Our Power 18s, and then it's 20 to 1 bar. Tom, I'll let you take this first. Have you a big price one, or are you frozen? Are we frozen? No, he's there. He's, no, I'm here. I'm just, uh, I'm just texting I think he's... Young, uh, young Sean Sinnott back. Uh, <laughs> um, we're on to, guys, just double-checking there, because I was definitely looking at Sean's text and not, and not this. We're on to the Hennessy, right? Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. Now, good thing is I do have an opinion on this. It may be a bad thing come three o'clock, but an opinion <laughs> it is no less. Um, I start with the obvious one. Mogenberg genius. Uh, look massively progressive last season. Um, he, the form of that ultimate looks very, very good with with Correct Rambler and um, and faster, slow in second. Um, he then basically got taken out. He didn't even really make an error. He kind of got jumped into at Ascot. Um, I, I, look, he's still very unexposed. Um, I think there's a handicap in him off this mark. Um, and, I, you know, it could be this one. He's got a lovely, lovely racing weight. Um, the other one then at a bit bigger price is Bill Baxter. He, he was another massive improver last season. Improved 26 pounds. Uh, he's won in big field handicaps around Aintree, so you have no worries about a field like this. The trains in form. I thought the seasonal reappearance was very, very good uh, behind Master uh, Marlon Mission. He travelled into it lovely. He just got tired. He really got looked after after that. There's a huge weight reversal here with that, uh, with Marlon Mission of a stone in weight. So um, my only concern is, is the ground going to be soft enough for him? Um, but I think, you know, over this staying trip, I, I really think he'll run a big race and he's a big price. Um, he hasn't got any weight on his back at all, basically. The bottom weight won this in 2020, and there's only been one winner carrying more than 12 stone in the past six years. So um, I know you do sometimes get horses in this that keep the weights down, but in general, you do want a low weight. Um, the other one I'll just throw in a little mention to is Cloudy Glenn. Venetia continues in fantastic form. Uh, he won this in 2021. He's only three pounds higher. Uh, ran a lovely race at Cheltenham on his return, and he could go close again. So but I'll take those three against the field. Anyway. Andrew. Um, yeah, I've two or three here that I like. Um, I'm saying with Tom with Bill Baxter. Uh, I thought that was a lovely comeback run last season. Tom said he was £26 improvement in him from last year. Um, he won the top, I believe, at Aintree. Uh, big fields won't, won't do him any harm. Um, I think he'll run a massive, massive race, as uh, Tom said, off uh, not in weight, really. Um, Malar Mission, geez, you're cutting back John McCollins' horse for counterfeit money right now. It's How many days is it? What? Four, it's 48 days. Yeah, it's a, over 100, about 120 odd since his last winner or something like that. Um, yeah, you couldn't with a, no, and he's seventh own favourite. I couldn't. Um, complete unknown. I really like uh, Grade One form last season. Um, massively progressive. He's carrying uh, ten stone eleven, which is not a bad racing weight. He's off one fifty two. I think he's a, a bit of manoeuvrability in that. Uh, good comeback round the last last time beating my Shoy. He was awesome when he got to the front. Um, this has been the plan. Um, I think like the only two horses to beat more fences last season was Galia de la Tau and um, Jerry Colom. So his his form is, is quite good. Uh, 15 to 2. I, I envisioned him going off favours um, come 
come the off. Um, I'd give him a massive, massive chance. This is these are kind of races that Pornick has always has something very, very good to aim at. What races like this on Saturdays, um, so I think he'll he'll have a massive chance. One that has a lot of form in. Um, big handicaps is stolen silver, and he won really nicely the last day. He's back up to Marco 157, but he has, um, he's he's trainer Sam Thomas is working at 25% strike rate, so his horses are still in flying form. Loads of experience here. Uh, second to Midnight River in the uh, New Year's Day at Cheltenham last season, and in 2021 Paddy Power meeting, he was the next second to editor De Guy. Um, so he looks he looks like he had come back into a nice bit of form after a few blips last season. So I would give him a chance as well. So yeah, complete unknown. Bill Baxter at a big price and a roll out stolen silver. Sean. Yeah, I very rarely do this in this sort of races, but um I've got well stuck into one here and um I've I've had a good bet on Monbeg Genius eight at uh, each way or eight to one. Um I see it very, very hard to see this lad outside the places. Um, he was a dark horse of mine up at the start of the season, and I thought he'd be aimed at something like this this big handicap because he definitely has a pot in him. Like, he racked up three wins last season. I went to Cheltenham, where he ran into Corey Grambler. He then bolted up in the national, and he had faster, slow, and second. He was going on to win a punch down grade one and backed up. That that was no fluke in the John Dokken last week, and he was only two lengths behind them. He made a seasonal reappearance at Ascot, where um, you can simply put a line through for me. He was running a nice race when he came to the 16th. And as Tom touched on, he jumped and he was sort of the two in front of him sort of came back a little bit and he was taken out. He then continued on. He got back into a rhythm and at the tour at last, he was brought to a standstill. Again, he jumped out. Two horses clashed from him and then um, brought him to a standstill. He fell back to last and he ended up being pulled up. It's first unlucky to happen to him. People are probably going to wonder as he got jumping problems. I wouldn't put it down to jumping problems at all. It's just two fluke things that have happened. And then um, off a of mark of 147 in here, he's a nice way. Um, I think he's a cracking bet in here. And then um, I think he'd be taking all the beat. And I can't. The reason I've gone each way is because I'd be dead shocked if he's outside the places. Maybe if something nips him. But um, I can't see him being outside the places now. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I always like Manor Mission for this, but I can't back him now because of the stable form. I'll let him go win. Um, Man by genius to put him up to start the season as a horse to follow, but I didn't like it at all. I know the lads are making excuses for the run at Ascot, but I didn't like it whatsoever. Um, it's very hard to know when a John Joe horse is actually going to be backed and primed to win as well, but I didn't see a whole lot in that race, to be honest, from him. So, willing to leave him go. So, and I, I came down on two then. Uh, the bigger priced one is That's Alright Gino. Uh, ran poorly enough at Aintree, but it turned into basically a bumper. Um, it was won by Jet Wall. It was the old Roan Chase. But if you forgive him that race and go back to his handicap form last year, uh, ran stage star very close. Um, and then beat Thunder Rock towards the end of the season, who's come out and uh, won a race at uh, Carroll Oil uh, a couple of weeks back. I think he is crying out for the trip uh he even looks a little bit too slow for two and a half miles so i think the trip will suit him um and he's in there off 10 stone seven uh i think he'll have a big pot in maybe not the hennessy but i'm willing to give it a shot at 22s uh, i think he's too big a price and then the other one is the skeletons uh I've been watching our horses the last few weeks we mentioned to sean not to go mad and protect her at but horses that have had a run for skeleton are winning and racing a lot better than their first run. Uh, Midnight River was in there against Gentleman's Game and Brave Man's Game, probably a step too far. Uh, but with a high senior running here, he finds himself on 11 stone one. He's 11 to one. Uh, I think they won it last year with Lamilos. I think they have a right good chance again. He was steadily progressive in handicaps last year. So Midnight River and That's All Right Gino are my two. Very good. Uh, on to Newcastle and the return of what some people will say the greatest hurler of all time. Exactly. I want to see it three times in a row and then I will say, okay. But Con Hill is here. <laughs> uh, one to six on. He should be about one to 14 on, to be honest. But there you go. So that's value. Value. GSI. If you're into that kind of stuff. Uh, Love him by 11 to two. Not so sleepy. 12 to one. You wear it well, 12 to 1, and Benson, 40 to 1. I wasn't far off when I said they a couple of months ago, 
I can't wait to see the the fight in fifth when Colin Hill is facing not so sleepy and so royal. Oh, no, I only miss so royal. Yeah, so it's a shame. Um, yeah, look, Colin Hill should win. I don't think there's much time spending overly long on it. Have we not got ten nice. minutes. Nice. Yeah, we'll leave you talk about. Nice to see him back. Um, hope all goes well. Hope you guys chat in one piece. Hope Pierre Pass gets there in one piece, and we actually have a good showdown. I hope he's. What I hope is he hasn't talked to Shishkin and the boys are after deciding to. Did fuck, you see what I done last week? Fuck Nicky Hendo over because I went to the race. I didn't race. And I still came home. It was great. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if he does the same thing and then Shishkin does it again. <laughs> Hendo will explode. Uh, Tom. Yeah, uh, look, I it's it's the Con Hill show, isn't it? And if he gets if he gets beaten this Sean, forget about it. Um, but um, no, nah, I, I I think he'll win this and he'll win easy, won't he? But another one to sit back and enjoy and, and watch. Must take me a while to walk that one out, Tom. And sh- uh, Sean, can't, you were going to call him Shishkin. I was going to call you Shishkin, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think any weekend that Constitution Hill runs is um, a great weekend. But um, look, we're probably just going to see another walk in the park here. Um, jumps around safely. He's not getting beat. So um, it's as simple as that. How far out does Nicky or does Stonehands want to take her up? If Con Hill was Irish, they would love him. I just don't like I don't matter if he's English or Irish. I don't care as long as he can win me money. No, I think it's great, right? the Irish English thing. I don't give a rat's ass about the Presbyterian Cup and all that either. I could not care less. <laughs> so many people sit there and hope this chap gets beaten. It's, it's, uh, and that's why I get such a thrill out of when he wins. I don't know. It doesn't matter me if he wins. I, no, yeah, just saying, is, I don't lose any sleep over I don't leave, I, I gave my argument with a Con Hill. The, hurdling, the stairs hurdles and the champion hurdlers. Are absolutely putrid at the moment. Con Hill's very good, but there's no other good ones. Stayman didn't even, you know what I mean? The Cheltenham race last year, what can you make of it? I don't know. There's like, stay in the, the champion hurdle division is as bad as the stairs hurdle division. I, I've said all along, I'd oh, like no. to see, uh, yeah, no. I'd like to see, please. I'd like to see a, like a wordy challenger and then to, to beat a wordy challenger on the bridle. Like, I wouldn't consider what Stayman did last year in the champion hurdle anything because he kind of just gave up with two hurdles to go like can you yeah, be honest think, and say that like oh no yeah i know but i think the consequences yeah. of going to chase him is probably ending the horse so you take your medicine but con hill is very good he's he's obviously very good very fast uh the 305 at newcastle the rehearsal handicap chase uh two miles seven and a half furlongs shishkin's back in here the home press a one day slasher so it's still about off top weight uh empire steel Nine stone twelve. <laughs> Easy as that. Puddy was all over this horse for the Paddy Power, so I'm sure he'll be going back in again. Nine stone seven. So you can see the weight Shishkin is carrying is making the race for the others here. But we've Elvis Mail eight to one. Bill Baxter's in here again. Tom tens. Gallo elevens. Credo twelves. That's all right. Gino's in here too. Twelves. Houston Texas sixteens and twenty to one bar. Even a wave of the sea is in here. Andrew. Um, yeah, a wave of the sea. Oh. You going for him? Ah, look, I, she, if she, the Shishkin, we all know. Shishkin. All know, uh, turns up here. Um, he should be good enough to carry 12 stone around here. She was said, home press, he done it last season. Um, yeah. But I just can't back Shishkin. Prime example of what happened last week, 2-1 to one in a race like this. No thanks either. Um, look, at uh, each race selection, he's 25-1. to one. He's having his first run for uh, Ben Haslam. Uh, he, used, he was in quite good form last season as well. He was fourth in much of the national. He was fourth in the Galway plate. He was fourth in a grade three hurdle. So look, the talent is still there. He's two pounds higher than his Dublin Racing Festival win. It's the only problem. He has some wins since then. That was back in 2022. Um, out of 2021, it was one of them. Um, that's the last time he won, but he's only two pounds higher than that. Uh, he's going to be used to these. Ra- he's used to these races, big fields. Um, if he gets into a nice rhythm and if the change of scenery has done him all the good in the world, I think twenty-five to one. You know, back worst twenty-five to one shots um, the weekend. I think he could run uh, a decent enough race. I'd be interested if they ran Bill Baxter there. I forgot to say it about the Hennessy. I don't know if he's going to truly stay the Hennessy trip. They drop him back here to two seven and a half. Uh, it might suit him better. Um, so yeah, if he runs here, I'd be interested in him as well. But I think Wave to see. I think he's a decent price, twenty-five to one. 
Uh, yeah, I I think Shishkin will do the same thing he did on Saturday. To be quite honest, really? I just don't think he wants it anymore. Uh, what what price would you give him to not jump off? I don't know. How could you price it up? I would hate to see him do it again, but I do think he will do it again. I'd say, I thought, he, I'd say he'll threaten to do it. I put him up as my horse take on for the entire year because his form, when you look at it truly, is not that great. Like the Angel race last year was terrible. A uh, high senior is just, he's barely a grade one horse. Um, and I thought he might get beaten last week. It would be hard to beat him, but sure, then he didn't even decide he wanted the race. So I don't think he could be backing him even at two to one. And his past exploits as a great horse, um, he's just a, he's just a lunatic like he's um, he's a lot of issues god bless him he he changed that day after racing an orgamine an orgamene in uh, ascot it all went tits up since then that race has a it history left, of breaking it, horses it, it obviously left their mark on him um and he's just he's his own man now um <laughs> the two lads andrew and tom put up i'm nearly sure put up empire steel uh, when he raced the first day and he got beaten by Elvis Mayle, they seemed to always race against each other and to take turns yeah. uh, one or the other. I think Ember Steele here has a, a good chance, uh, good stay are kind of typical for this type of race, nothing flashy about him. Uh, Shishkin should be good enough to win, but I would not trust him whatsoever. Sean? Yeah, I think, look, it's a no bet race for me. Now, we'll be staying well clear of this, but like, it all resolves around Shishkin. And um, you've seen all the hand press they done in this last year. Like, the good horses are there to carry these big weights. Um, but God knows if he's going to start. Like, it didn't look good last week. And then I was reading during the week, they had him away as Ara Tindall's doing show jumping, wherever else. I'd say he probably could be gone at the game and they tried to just spark something in him. So, um, you'd be a brave man to back him. Tom? Yeah, it's kind of the same as, as John was saying. Um, couldn't couldn't touch Shishkin, obviously. Um, and he's he's a dirty little so and so. I watched the replay back of what he did. Um, uh, like he gave, like I know he gave inclination before, but like he he even trots in to go and take off and then just stops around. again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> um, yeah. No, I'd be worried now. And I tell you, if he does it again, they're in serious trouble. Cause yeah, yeah. You, you might forgive him doing it once, but God, if he does it again, they're in massive trouble. With him, so, um. But look, his presence in here, as Sean said, makes it a no bet race for me. I, I'm not worried about that Hennessy trip for Bill Baxter. I'd love to see them roll the dice and go for it because the alternative is if you're taking on Shishkin here, it's going to be very hard to beat him if he jumps off. Um, so if he turned up here and he was 10 to 1, I'd have a proper each way bet on him. Um, the reason I was back in, I was GSI into Empire Steel the last day, Dave, and I'm still not over it, to be honest, was his Kelso form. Um, he, he'd only been beaten once at Kelso before that, um, never outside the first two. And then, of course, he goes and gets beaten, finishes third. Today. I storm into it. So, um, yeah, story of my life. Um, but, uh, yeah, if Bill Baxter turns up here, I'd back him each way. Uh, other than that, definite no bet race. Do you remember Sariska on the flat when she did it the first day and they were full sure that she wouldn't do it again? She just stood, she just stood there in the thaws. That's it. I'm not doing it anymore. And that's the end of it. Spencer just laughing on the back. Yeah, sure. What can you do? And if he does it again, that's that's it. Like uh, I remember when Mad Moose used to do it. And well, he, he was had some talent that last And what the bookies used to do is they wouldn't pay you back your money then mm. if you didn't jump off. It's just like it is what it is. Oh, I know there was issues. They pay out the weekend. I, don't, I think they don't. Yeah, no, no. They, they treat them as a runner the weekend, mm. I think. Oh, some gave money, fucking so. money back. If you're back <laughs> then, best of luck to you. Like, so, that's what they The bank used to do it, but... If, if he does it again, like Tom said, there's serious trouble. If, they, if he does it again, they'd... They're going to need to change. Look, it, send him somewhere else, change table or something, because there's obviously something going on in his head that he's just not happy. If he does it again, the cross country is going to be an unbelievable race. <laughs> I, if he does it again, I will. I'm recording the interview with Nicky Henderson. He will fucking flip. Oh, okay. We're off to Ferry House on Sunday. Can't wait uh, for this race. Yeah, very good race. Great. The Royal Bond Novice Hurdle, Grade One, two miles. Bruno, 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 Bruno is favourite five to two. Uh, you've two in here for Henry. Then on Tubber eleven to four, Slade Steel four to one, 
Fan and Glory, 6 to 1. Facile and Road, 7 to 1. What's up, Darling, 7s and 12 to 1 bar. Uh, I like on Tubber in this. Um, I was texting the lads, I think yesterday or today, saying I think Henry has a couple of decent novices. Um, obviously, it's the two in here. I don't think Slade Steel is as good as on Tubber. So if on Tubber doesn't run, I'll probably just leave it alone. I would be kind of unhappy if Encanto Bruno was good enough to win a grade one, mm-hmm. uh, even at the start of the season. And I try not get too overburdened with the hype of novices until I see them. But I really liked on Tubber the first day. Um, I think it was a punch down, wasn't it? A fairy house, whatever yeah, it was. Uh, I really liked him. So I think he's a good price if he runs. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, look, Encanto Bruno's run at Cheltenham, it was working out. Well enough, there's been winners that are coming out from behind it. Of course, as you said, I'd be at this point if he can win a grade one. Um, on top of his performance at Fairy House was really, really good. He he looks the part, he performed the part, and he jumps really well. I think there's buckets of improvement to come from him. Um, I, I, I really, really like him. Um, yeah, there's not much more I can I can really see on it from look, just go back and watch his Fairy House run. You can see the way he's traveling through the race, the way he jumped, and the way he put the bet they raced the bed very quickly. Um, there's a lot more to come from. I think eleven to four. I think he'll go off favours. And look again, the Canterbury is a decent horse. Um, did he not bomb out with Galway over ground, over soft ground, or something like that? Um, in Canto, yeah. Uh, he uh, he ran poorly anyway. Yeah, if the ground gets soft, it's probably a negative to him. Um, but yeah, on top, I really like him. There's a lot to like about him. I think he'll win. Tom. Yeah, I, I think whichever of Henry's runs will win. And Cantor Bruno was very good at uh, at Cheltenham. And in fairness, you you probably questioned the form of that before, but the second has gone and run really well behind Crow Park in a great free. So I do think the form of that is strong. I, I do question the ground, but look, he's with a different trainer now. Who knows? Um, I'd give him a go, but I wouldn't be backing him. I really like Slade Steel as well, but I presume... I presume only one of the Henry horses is going to run and it probably is going to be on top hour, isn't it? Um, he was very impressive at the Ferry House. Uh, the second one next time, but now, in fairness, he's only going to be rated in kind of around probably 115 that horse. So he, he's not that great, but he did go and beat him well. So, um, and I'm sure he would have been trained to come on for the run because he'd been off for nearly two years. So, um, yeah, they've clearly got you know, a good run into him as in, as in he's, he's come on from that run. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd be keen on him as well, Dave and Farron glory is worth a shout. I'm not sure if they'll come here though. He bolted up at Clamel, but he looks like he wants further. He is actually a half brother to Croke park himself. Uh, and he could, he could look like he wants three miles in a fence, but uh, he's a lovely horse as well. But uh, if on top of runs, I'd, I'd back him. Sean? Yeah, I think it's a cracking card uh, um, for any house. There's good races around as well, the handicaps. But um, this race here, there's a revelation going to happen on the finishing line. And the fate is being put back in Henry. Um, I'd be all over Slade Steel here now if he runs. Um, Someone gave you a bang on the fucking head, did they? I know. Look, we fell out of love betting terms. Um, but look, we're going to give him another bash. I'm happy with what I've been seeing lately. And... Um, I'd be over all over Slade Steel. I wasn't. I look and Tobo did what he did um, on Maiden, but I was far more impressed with Slade Steel and Canto Bruno. Um, his two disappointments have come with soft in the ground when he was back in the champion bumper and being at Galway. If any sort of soft is in the description, you'd be worried. But um, what Slade Steel done at Nice was very impressive to me. He looked as if he took a blow coming around the bend. Rachel gave him a push, and um, he found plenty when he picked back up. Between the last two, he put a nail on King of Kingsfield head, went down and pinged the last and skewed away. Good bumper for him last season. He was just in behind Ballyborn at the Punchdown Festival. I think if he runs here, I'll be backing him. Say so whichever one does run will win. Yeah, that King Kingsfield is some useless fucking he's, horse. He needs 3.5 miles. Uh, the bar one racing, Drinmore Novice Chase, two miles, four furlongs. Let's be clear about it. It's two to one favourite. Found a 50, 11 to four. Sharjah, 11 to four. I am Maximus, 13 to two. American Mike, tens. Faberty, the Champ Dew, 12s. And Percival, the Galois, scam horse for a handicap, mm-hmm. 12 to one. Correct. Uh, Andrew. Uh, let's be clear about it. GSI, this thing is fantastic. Great jumper, great traveler, 
puts races to bed in the blink of an eye. He's making up for lost time, um, wasted his time over hurdles. Um, yeah, I think he's miles clear. This found a 50. Look, he ran half a chase, half a bumper. Um, he was the horse that was second to him, Colin Marshall, just hates winning races. Good horse in his own right, but I think let's be clear about is by far the best chaser here. Sharjah will put it <coughs> to me is the danger. Um, Oya Maximus is definitely a prepper. Uh, American Mike, I don't know if they run him here. Um, but yeah, I think let's be clear about he's one of the best bets of the weekend. Tom? Yeah, I'm with Andrew. I think there's two to one around in a couple of places. I see he's already shortened in a couple more. I, I make him a, at least a max five to four shot. I think this race is made for a horse like this. Um, he was very, very impressive um, at, at Cork. He's already won his grade three. He's won his novice chase as well at, uh, at, at Goran. And, um, yeah, I think he may find one or two too good later on in the season, but I think this type of race is made for him. Um, again, like Andrew said, I am Maximus. You know, I can't see him being good enough, and, and I'm sure it would be a prep run. American Mike surely isn't going to run given the price and that you only ran 14 days ago. Favorita Shamdu surely isn't going to run. Around, uh, isn't going to run, and uh, Legolas is uh, is the handicap good thing come the festival. So um, yeah, free runner race. Uh, if if you can get any of that two to one that's still available now and now, or even seven to four, I I'd, I'd take it. Sean, um, I actually have a different opinion here. I think Charge is a cracking price at three to one. Um, this old boy, he's ten. They sent him novice chasing Lee. But um, what we've seen, he's seen the first day at Galway, he was electric jumping. You won't see about the novice chaser jumping this fella. Um, he went and beat Mars Harper by 11 lengths, who came out and won twice since. He then went to Tipperary, where he won a grade three in October. I think there's a touch of recency, boys, about, let's be clear about, and the price here. I reckon they might fix themselves on the day in charge. and might come into a two-to-one shot. Um, but he's jumping at Tipperary again, stood to him. He ended up jumping himself to the lead at the fourth. And he stayed out in front and dictated. He bolted up one on the bridle, beating Captain Comey, who went over to Wincanton, I think, and finished second or third in the greater race. But um, I think his jumping's going to stand him in good stead. I can see him going out the front here, and um, he's going to take the beating in half of me. Yeah. You would hope that something... <sighs> A six year old or seven. I, 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 I think this is going to be his uh, main grade one. He's going to fall short later yeah. in the season. And the fact they got him out early, I think they've given him a good stretch to this now. And I think this is his big day. Yeah, you'd be hoping that, like a six or seven year old to be coming out and winning this and be around for a few seasons. Um, but the only kind of one you think could is found a 50. And I don't think he's good enough. Um, so it left me to choose between Let's Be Clear About it and Sharjah. And I just don't think Let's Be Clear About his form is all that good, to be honest. I don't rate that mighty Tom that was second. I know he was on the snap, but it's just not that much good. And Largy Davey was just fucking crap. Yeah, um, uh, and I think Sean took the words out of my mouth. There's a bit of recency bias because Sharjah was just as good in his couple of races over fences. He would have been a much better uh, horse throughout his whole career, a much better hurdler. Uh, and I think he should be a favourite. And he's the one for me. Sharjah all the way. Uh, the last one then for today. The 235 of Ferry House, uh, the Hatton's Grace Hurdle, Grade 1, and um, we see Imperial Pass coming back here, 4 to 6. Uh, T Hoopo, 11 to 4. Irish Point, 8 to 1. Astro Diamond, 11 to 1. Body One, 14s. Zana here, 14s. And Beacon Edge, 33 to 1. Uh, Imperial Pass's biggest fan is Tom, so you can take this away. Yeah, rev for this, um, so we can get a good look at him and, and see how he goes. <laughs> Um, I thought you meant he'd be revved. You think he? You won't? You don't think he'll be revved, or you do think he'll be revved? I don't think he will be revved. Mm. Yeah, I mean Willie Mullins, Willie Mullins' little sidekick there, Sean, um, is has even gone. Has <laughs> <laughs> even gone part. a bit. He's he's gone a bit windy on Willie in the last few days. He, do you know what it is, Tom? He's Willie has now become his Henry. Oh no, Jesus, absolutely not. No, That's not no, what the text message is say. 
Yeah, if it, if it was Henry, they the engines would be falling out and and they'd be out the back of the telly. But when it happens to Willie, it's a different story, obviously. So, um, <laughs> they're just not fit enough. Willie just has half of his horses fit and half of his horses not fit, um, which is obviously, I I would say nonsense, Sean, but others would disagree. Um, look, some of them are getting beat. I I would be mildly concerned, but he's still operating at a twenty eight percent strike rate, which is probably a few percentage points short for where he normally operates, which just tells you what an insane operation he has and, and how good he is. But um, one or two of them aren't, aren't quite running up to it. Um, Galloping got beat at one to two. Uh, he had a two to nine shot beat in Tremor the other day, the one to eight shot beat. I think he had a one to five shot beat as well. Um, so look, it's, it's by no means a, a foregone conflu- conclusion. It, it's a no bet at four to six, obviously, but um I think Jesus, he's an early plan, Tom. I, I, just, I just think I think that market tells you all you need to know, Sean. You got last year's winner, Tihupu, who won a fairly decent renewal last year. He's eleven to four, and Imperi passes four to six. That's a massive, massive price difference. So, uh, I look, I'm still all over him. I, I think he's an aeroplane. Um, but as I say, it, it's a no bet race at that price. But I hope he wins. We'll see what happens. Tom, happy to watch Andrew. I'd be happy to watch as well. Um, Imperial Pass, I think he he has the credentials to given Con Hill a race. He'll be beating these. Uh, two mile four won't be a problem for him. Um, T. Hoopo, I'd say he'd be rev to the gills to retain his crown. Um, won't put anyone off. Say, if how many is there? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I was going to say if there's eight runners, but he wouldn't probably run into place. But yeah, Imperial Pass, and I hope he wins, and I hope he wins impressively. Sean. Yeah, I'm heading up to Ferdy House and I'll be running down to the ring about 10 minutes early to check what the Hoopoo looks like. Um, if he looks like he's ready to go, I think I'll be taking on a period pass here. I just think this is the Hoopoo's playground and he could be drilled for this first run. Um, he won last year, Renil, where he be Honeysuckle and Classical Dream. Two and a half miles, soft ground around her. Um, I think this is playground. I've no doubt a period pass is good. I just don't know how good he is. Going in against open level here for the first time, I think he's up against a sturdy enough task. The Morgiana probably might have been an easier option last week, um, but Stateman ran there. So oh, if Tihupu was strip fit and looked good, ready to go, I'll be back on my level of four. That price difference is just way too big. Sure, and Piri passed me. That thing that won by six million lengths, Gaelic Laguerre looked like a average enough horse. Ah, look... For me, it's uh, four to six. I think is a good price. Uh, I reckon on Sunday, if he's still around that price, all these bookies will be doing their their ten euro specials, uh, even money, and I will have thirty euros at even money. My max bet on Impere Moose. Should win. He will win. Should win. Will win. Will win. That's better. You think, will win. You think? You think it's that clear? I think it's very clear. Uh, it's, it's, it's crystal clear. Yeah, Let's I be clear about he, it. He's. Yeah, he's no, look, there's no denying he's good. I just think Tehupu's playground could be drilled for the first run where you know he's not going to be. And he's still like, six points to prime. I tell you, you Hoopu's nowhere near his level. I tell you what I call... If you run to you Hoopu, well, he's going to come and say run over two of my four. It's going to be run over two of my four on the weekend. I think he's bad for him. I tell you what I, th- what I think about Tehupu. Useless. A dog. Can't beat Dash and Drasher. He can't beat... I think this is the time to catch him, but... Sorry to Burley. No, he, he beat an undercooked honey circle and he beat... Uh, undercooked classical dream. No this, catching Tia Hoopo. If I was playing hide and seek with Tia Hoopo, I'd walk out the room and just leave him hidden. <laughs> Hate him. And not go look for him. Yeah, I wouldn't look for him. I'd just leave him there. Hide he, yourself away there, please. Thinks he's very good at the Fucking game. Fucking clown horse. Uh, Naps at next best. I'm surprised you didn't go for Astro Diamond each way. Me? Right, I know him. Oh, Imperial Astro Diamond. Imperial Moose. Tom is going to be absolutely good. <laughs> Come on, Imperi Moose. Andrew, Nap's the next best. Uh, Nap, let's be clear about it. Next best on Tubar. Uh, Tom? Yes, yeah, similar story. On a on a weekend where it's maybe hard to find a few bets, I think, um, is let's be clear about is definitely one. Um, if you get on at those prices now, I, I would get stuck in. Um, and then it's difficult after that. I am quite keen on Bill Baxter. Um I'd say Bill Baxter and Mongbeg genius against the field in the Hennessy. Sean? 
Uh, the nap is going to be Monbeck Genius each way. He's about eight to one, and um, the next best is going to be Sharjah. Uh, yeah, it's hard. I want to nap something in the Hennessy, but it's very hard race. Do it. Uh, no, because I'm really I'm it's stuck your between race. two. Man, you love that race every year, man. Ah, uh, okay, nap midnight, midnight river. I it's think very easy to he, this fella. he has the better chance of the two I picked, but each way on that's all right, Gino. And I actually think Sharjah will win. I do. I think it, the recency bias has led to Sharjah's price being better than it should be. Cash in on the value now, Dave. Value pays the bills, isn't that right, Tom? That's right, Dave. Only way to win long term is value. He- Incorrect, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Working 12 hours in freezing fucking cold pays the bills. Uh, on that note, thank you very much. Please leave our selections below. There were some good comments there. People calling everything mooses. Imperi moose. Tia who moose. Uh, that was a good one. I enjoyed that. I am Maximus. It was a very good one as well. <laughs> so keep those comments coming. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, as ever. I didn't tell Andrew yet, but I'm not here Sunday, but I'm sure the lads will be. Uh, I'm all weekend, so Sunday I will be recovering, or I might be dead. Can we ask where you're going? Uh, I have uh, a party for the gym on Friday night, and then a party for the gym that I compete out on Saturday night. Well, do you know how that's, well, let's all have Sunday off. That's uh, that's like a, a ball kind of thing in a, in a hotel, so it's, I just it's made a big decision. Deal. We're all having Sunday off. Chetland Festival anti post video will be going up Sunday instead. Well, yeah. on that note, enjoy your weekend. NFL, let's go. Can I have the bet this time for once? I'll send on a bet.